Okay, it's recording. I just decided randomly to do that. Okay. Hi. <laughs> hello. Uh, hello. I didn't touch it at all. It just started. It was How like, it's oh, time. Guys. We're fine. How are you? Um, hey, guys. Coach Hunter here. Kenzie. Hey. We're going to be working on uh, the triangle choke today. Okay. Uh, it doesn't specifically require the gi by any means, but I like the gi uh, because we can hit uh, everything in this, okay? Uh, so with different grips and different options. So let's get into it. Uh, there's a lot of ways. We're going to go over some basics of the triangle and really drill into it. Uh, last time we talked about the triangle, we talked about it in context of the arm bar and the triangle and how they fit together. Let's get into the triangle in more detail. So guys, starting off with, it, with our general grappling warm-up, um, we have lots of options. Uh, go ahead and follow along with the video I did previously. We're going to add some specific drills for the triangle in this video. A few of them I did in the solo grappling drills, but I think it's really important we uh, highlight these for this video. Okay? So I'll be screwed out. First one is going to be our egg beaters. Okay, guys? So when we're thinking about this, I'm drawing a circle with one foot and then the other foot. You notice that in the center, in this case, I'm going upward. Okay? So I'm making the circle. My legs aren't just kicking around. I'm not just flailing my legs right around. I want to make sure that I'm making these circles. And as I'm doing this, my hips are going to be switching. See my hips are tilted to one side, which is the other. Okay, that's the action we're really trying to emphasize, as well as this pummeling movement. Okay, so my hips are pivoting. Okay, my shoulders are curled off the ground, and my hips are slightly curled off the ground. My back is rounded. Okay, from the side. Speed is less important, guys. I'd rather you hit this movement correctly and go real slow. Turning my hips pivoting. My, my legs are turning, rotating in the socket of my hip. Okay, take your time. Be correct. Go both directions. I was going up in the center. Now I'm going to go down in the center. Same movement. Generally, you'll find one of these is more is easier for you than the other. I don't know why, for whatever reason, going up is easier for me. But you should be able to go both directions. Definitely practice both. Okay, next drill. We're going to be rolling backwards. I'll show from the side first. Extending our hips. They're really important. My hips come off the ground. I'm rolling back onto my shoulders. I start by sitting up. That has momentum, okay? So as I roll backward, my hips are coming off the ground because I'm staying tight. I'm shooting my hips up, okay? After a while, we should be able to do this with my back flat. This is my hips, okay? Straight on. Starting up, sitting up. I roll backward and extend. Okay? And then flat. My back is flat. Hips come up and extend my hips. So the next addition is going to be triangling my legs with a twist. So I'm going to end up with my legs in this position. You can call this tri a triangle of the legs, okay? I'm taking my ankle, not my foot, my ankle, behind my knee. I'm curling my heel down to lock this leg in place. This is the one I care about. This leg right here. This leg is my securing leg. Okay, my toes are curled up, toes to my knee. Okay, really important. I have this relationship here, okay? So, I'm gonna twist my hips toward whatever side I have the lock on, okay? So in this case, I'm rolling back, my hips come up, and I do a triangle in the air, and twist toward, okay? I roll up, and there with the twist. I can switch sides. Good drill for the core, but also to work on our triangle catch, okay? Because it's really important my hips are elevating when I go to this triangle. Because it's high. <laughs> so guys, before we get to the full triangle, we're going to do a drill. Can you up, please? And there's a lot of ways to go about this, okay? But basically, I'm going to throw up a triangle. We'll start with the force triangle where I'm going to just push one hand to her chest or the other. Okay, this will, itself is a good drill. If I'm manipulating your hands, of course, in yogi, I grip the wrists. 
Okay, listen. Whatever we're doing, I push one hand in, one hand out. That's our trigger for the triangle. My legs come up, I shoot my legs to the target. Oh, to my uh, partner. Okay, you'll notice that my hips are off the mat. Okay, when I got there. When I shoot in. So push and pull, push and pull. My hips come up. I'm not just throwing my legs up. This is a lazy triangle. Okay, and you're gonna get what you put into it. Because Mackenzie can either easily feed her other arm back inside. Give her a shoulder too. Okay? Or like just pull herself out. Alright? It's very loose. I need a tight triangle. I push and pull. I shoot my hips up to her. Now there's way less space in there. She tries to feed this other arm through. It's gonna be really hard. She tries to pull the other arm out. It's gonna be hard, okay? Especially if I'm squeezing my knees together and pulling her in. My knees pull to my chest, okay? So that'd be how we get the catch, okay? Once we have our catch, we're gonna do a little drill. Okay, it's basically like our, um, the, uh, the last drill we did and the, the egg beaters. And then I'm pivoting my hips. Without even worrying about the details, I'm just turning my, my hips inward one way, and then the other way. One way, the other way, okay? And one thing you'll notice is that you keep doing this, you're gonna, it's gonna get tighter and tighter. Kenzie, what do you think? You getting tighter? Right, I'm almost choking you right now, okay? And all I'd have to do to lock this in, is take my legs across the back of my neck, lock it behind my knee, and get a tap. So, push me on the other side. Yeah. Oh, so guys, it's a hip pivoting, okay? So we just force triangle, I push and pull, my legs come up over her shoulders. Okay, so you also notice a couple of things with the triangle here, I should turn with you. That one of my legs is on top of her shoulder directly, the other one, the shoulder is inside from under her shoulder in a certain sense, okay? Really important to know that difference. I can lock it in on either side, but it's slightly different. When I lock it in on the side, on this side, it's a reverse triangle, okay? Because this is the opposite of what's normal for the triangle. It is not as tight, but it can be finished, okay? You can lock it in and try to finish it here. But you'll notice that it's not gonna be as tight, not gonna be quite as effective as a strangle. So the angle I want is the opposite, turning to the other way, okay? I'll show this with more detail in a second. So if I lock this in, Okay, and once again, I, I'm doing this very hand wavy, just for the purposes of the drill, okay? Uh, in that, uh, I'm not actually properly doing these steps, so understand that I'll be doing this more detail in a second. If I end up on my foot, I can curl my toes to pull this in. <coughs> okay, so I'm gonna make it a little tighter. So, let's get into this now in detail with all the finishing details, okay? So the drill there, sorry, uh, to elaborate, is that I'm pivoting my hips, my partner. Turning, and notice that I'm, I'm swimming, swinging my body from one side of her as I go to the other. Okay, and my, my abs are curled and crunched, and I'm coming through because in reality I only do that a couple once or twice before I actually end up locking this in. So, with the force triangle, when I say force, it's because I'm just kind of pushing your hands where I want them. Anytime my opponent comes in with one hand in tight to them, one hand forward they're in danger of the triangle, okay? So your arms should move together or know exactly where they need to be, okay, when you're inside the guard, swing for it. So push and pull, okay? I throw my legs up and over, okay? So for the most efficient triangle, I want my lock on the outside, on the same side as the arm that I'm attacking, okay? People are often going to freak out here. She, she's in a triangle, she's gonna to try to get tall, I'm pulling my knees to my chest, I'm often gonna grab the back of the head, underhook the shoulder, just kind of ride it out, okay, until she settles down a little bit or I feel the opportunity to move. Okay, the arm relax. Turn a little bit. The arm is inside. Can either be all the way through, which is more traditional, or I actually really like it over here in my hip on this far side. It gives us good bailing options like arm bars. The other side has arm bars too. Um, you know, I can actually attack this right now with if it's inside my armpit, okay? 
Oma Plata is there. Lots of cool stuff. Okay, I can hit the Kimura right here. Okay, lots of good stuff here. If it's across, I can always pivot to the armbar. We talked about last time. There's a cool thing called the Swifty Walk. Right here. here. Uh, thanks, Phil. Right? Thanks, Phil Schwartz. And the wrist lock is always there too, which is always the, the most, the, the most Thank, fun submission. Thanks, I Kyle. Like <laughs> I know you. So, Damn it. when I'm going through this actual technique, I'm just gonna control her posture, okay? Because if I open my legs and I have no postural control, she's gonna be gone, right? So, she should be anyway, okay? So, I'm gonna control her posture. I'm gonna reach over to grab my shin, the one I'm gonna be pulling across. Uh, we should be able to do this with just my hip pivot, but if I need to, I step on our hip or the mat over here. The hip is better because it allows me to move relative to my opponent, but the mat's fine, okay? Whatever one works. I'm pushing, extending this leg to push me over here. One thing I always advocate is we're hooking this inside the thigh. Turn with me. I'm hooking inside of her leg here. The reason this is important is that it helps me pull me to the deeper to my angle, okay? The less flex, the more I pivot, the less flexibility I need, okay? The other reason that this is really important is that if Mackenzie's strong enough to pick me up, okay, and I'll show that from the opposite side in a second, uh, it's gonna be impossible for her to slam me if I have that leg. Okay, so I come through and I pick, I'm gripping her leg, okay? I curl this in, knees to curl, toes, sorry, knee, my toes curl to my knee, like that, that, toes to knee, and it's a finish, I'm really just gonna wait. I shouldn't be squeezing super, super hard. Okay, um, so I'm going to get rest here. When I lock this in, I can try to go roll loose. Um, if I go, squeeze as hard as I can, I might burn my legs up and I cramp. Um, and if she survives it, that's gonna suck. So I should just kind of hold this and wait. Eventually she'll go, okay? This is one where we have patience. Plus, come back in, I'm like, I'm Imagine my, this is the lock is full. Um, in MMA, I just start beating someone up here. Thank you. Anderson Silva, famous TKO of Travis Meter. From inside the triangle, really, really brutal. Because you're stuck there. If you can't escape, okay, and you can't get choked out, you can still get hit in an MMA, okay? Uh, my fourth fight ended up losing by a TKO. Actually, it was my fifth. Uh, and the finish happened when I got caught in a triangle on the guard. And he just, and if he couldn't finish me, I knew enough to stall it out. Um, but I couldn't escape. And he ended up just pounding my face and ended up getting TKO. So really important guys to understand of those positions. We'll talk about defense in some other video. But uh, from the other side, so Mackenzie has me in a triangle, real briefly. It's important to understand guys, when you can slam and when you cannot go ahead and go all the way. So please. So, in grappling, most grappling tournaments will not let you slam, okay? If you pick someone up over your waist, you have to put them down gently. You're not allowed to use the mat as a uh, tool or as an attack, okay? So I pick Mackenzie up, oh. right? I can slam her down in MMA. In MMA, I can slam her down as hard as I want, because she can let go, right? She lets go with her legs. Oh, too late, I already have her, right? But that's the rule, okay? I can slam. Now, in most grappling tournaments, I have to put her down nice and gently. Okay? In EBI rules, full EBI rules, if someone picks you up past their hips, you have to reset. Okay, so actually they get an escape. So being able to pick you up is an escape. But if Mackenzie had hooked my leg, I would have been unable to do that, and it would have kept her safe from the slam and the uh, escape because of an EBI. Okay? So, guys, try it out. A uh, great app application for a grappling dummy. You remember, we can build one using a hoodie or a gi, okay? Um, if you don't already have one, or a partner you can want to play with. So guys, try it out. If you have any trouble, let me know, and we'll get going here. All right, guys, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you on the mat.